Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to another day of Mixed Media Mayhem. I am actually using my Kit Conspiracy kit to do a bit of the uh, stuff on this layout. So I'm gonna call it a Kit Conspiracy layout even though it's not a normal day for posting. And we are using this beautiful, stunning artwork from Memory Keep Art. Um, her scrapbook pages are just phenomenal. I stumbled across her a while back over on Instagram. If you're not following her, you absolutely should be. She has some beautiful stuff. Um, a lot of mixed media. So if you're into mixed media, um, and also a lot of alcohol ink, so highly recommend her stuff. So I'm starting out with the, uh, mm, diamond plate paper and, uh, she doesn't have a whole lot of background paper on her layout at all. She really just has a few kind of banner pieces, but I'm going to go ahead and use this as my background paper. And then she does have some corrugated, cardboard on there and I'm also going to use some corrugated cardboard so just to mimic what she's got going on. I'm inking up my edges with some Black Set Distress ink and I am just kind of figuring out the placement of the photos here. I've got one that's slightly larger than the other. The photos are very similar, um, just their heads and their facial expressions are slightly different. That is my son and his girlfriend. Uh, my husband had taken them out to dinner while I was at a retreat and that is uh, the photo that he took while they were having dinner. And so I thought I'd go ahead and document that. Um, I am playing around with how far up I want that paper on the bottom left hand corner there. Um, I kind of wanted it to be a little smaller than the one that's up in the upper right hand corner just like she's got in hers and it all goes fine until I flipped my entire layout upside down and uh, ended up building it that way. So <laughs> um, it looks fine all, all, at the end of the day. I'm not, I'm really happy with the way that it turned out, but yeah, it was not, it didn't, it wasn't exactly how I intended it to be, but sometimes that happens, right? Now I'm not worried about those little pieces that are kind of jutting out on the uh, um, diamond plate paper because my photo is going right over that area. Now she's got a lot of blue kind of a a blue wispy background in the back um, going on behind her photo and because I've got that diamond plate that's got that rusted look to it I am using some tea dye from Tim Holtz to go ahead and ink that up and I'm I do have some kind of like a bluish teal in the photo my son's shirt is that color but it's really really dark so I kind of felt like this was a, the better option and um, I do like how it looks. What I'm doing here is you, you can see those darker splotches that I am kind of tapping my brush off. I don't really want to show those darker splotches. I want it to be really soft. And so when I put it in the ink and the first time you put it down on the paper, it leaves those darker splotches. So I am just kind of tapping it off behind where the, where the paper is going to cover it so that I don't have to worry about having to blend in that really saturated uh, ink spot. So I'm liking how this is looking and I feel like it's going to uh, work really well with the uh, orange in the diamond plate there. And I'm kind of playing with how far out I want to bring it. You may have noticed I have a pencil there and I, I had the paper there and I kind of traced below the paper uh, how far um, out the paper was going to go so that I don't waste my time inking up underneath where the paper is and so that I also know when I want to tap off my blending brush that it's going to be hidden. So that is what I was doing with that pencil and um, I'm not super concerned about making it really um, like perfect coverage and blended super smooth. It's going to end up with some mixed media on it and a bunch of other inking going on so it doesn't have to be perfect. What I'm doing here is I'm testing out my stencil that I'm going to use. I'm testing it with some Uncharted Mariner over the orange and the reason I tested it is because uh, when you add blue and orange together um, you don't always get the color that you were looking for so I wanted to kind of test it and see what I'm looking or what I was going to end up with and the blue ended up being a little too vibrant for what I decided I wanted. So I end up uh, using some black soot. Now I am on a zoom call at the same time while I'm working on this. So you can see my hand moving around. Um, 
I'm probably talking to somebody on the Zoom call. This uh, stencil is from Paper Rose, I believe. I will put the link to it down below if it's still available. And I like the way that that looks. She's got some circular elements. Um, hers are a much finer detail than mine are, um, but that's okay. And then to get the smaller circle, I'm only inking up the smaller circles of the stencil. I'm not going as far to the outside of the stencil as I did on that top one. And I like the way that that is looking. So um, giving me those circular elements just like she's got on her layout. Now I do want this circular element to be smaller and down in the bottom corner. And like I said, I do end up flipping the whole thing. Um, actually, I think I may have already flipped it because I've got the bigger piece in the bottom left instead of in the upper right. But uh, like I said, I, I don't mind how it came out. It just wasn't as I expected um, or what I had originally intended. But sometimes that happens, you know, you're um, multitasking on a call, also doing your layout and... Um, lo and behold, it, <laughs> you do something different than you thought you were going to do. Or you just change gears midstream, and that happens all the time as well. Now, I am using black soot to go ahead and ink up the edges of the diamond plate there. And then I have these Prima stamps. This one is like a little bit, of, it looks like a ledger, and it's super tiny. Um, and these little tiny stamps are, I don't know, 2 or $3. They're really inexpensive, but they work so well. The key is I am using archival ink so that if I decide to add any water or anything to this layout on top of it or any more um, inking that it won't run because it is uh, permanent. Um, it's not going to run with water. And then the key to stamping the images around on your layout with one of these little squares is not to ink up the entire um, stamp because if you do that you're going to have little square images. So if I get, once I ink it up, I take my um, towel, I have like an old towel here, and I just kind of rub around it so it's not uh, around the outside so I don't have a square image because I don't want those harsh lines. And then I'm also going to go over it with a text stamp, and I, I think I already did that. That was the second stamping, um, and that is also from Prima. So I'm liking how that's looking. Now I am using a stencil from Dusty Attic. I do not remember the name of it. I think it's called Burlap, but I, I can't be certain of that. Um, but I will put a link to that down below also in case you're interested in a in this stencil. Um, she had some stencil work going on in the center of her layout and coming out from underneath the edges of hers as well. So I thought I'd go ahead and mim mimic that. Now I have a different stencil than she has, but that's okay. Um, we don't want it to be the exact match. <laughs> uh, and this one I just thought worked well because it's very, um, I don't know, it's, it's not a perfect stencil. It's got a lot of uh, areas that are not like perfect circles or anything like that. And I, I don't want anything perfect going on anyway. So I thought that works well. Also, the images are little. So a, a fine detail one is really good for this type of a layout. At least I feel it is. Anything too large, I think it's going to compete with the other stencil work that I've already done. Now I just took some of my tea stain or tea dye and I stamped it off on my acrylic block there, added a little water, and I'm just splattering a little bit around here and there. And then I'm going to add some Dina Wakely Media Gloss in Syrup and Ancient. Uh, the Ancient has got a metallic finish and the Syrup is not quite metallic, um, but it is glossy. So... Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and add the some cheesecloth underneath each of the photos. So I'm going to play with that for a little bit here and try and get it layered up perfect, or not perfect, but imperfect. And um, on hers, she has some kind of fiber uh, beneath her photos as well. I don't know if it's just thread or what, but um, I'm going to use cheesecloth. I think that's going to work well for me. Uh, what I showed you on the screen there was the tea dye. Uh, distress ink and the texture paste which is just the opaque uh, texture paste from Ranger that I used to put on the background through that stencil. Now I do have a couple of extra pieces of this blue and orange plaid so I'm going to use that. The blue matches my son's shirt really well and then it's got a, a small orange 
part in it or a line in it and I thought that worked really well also so I'm going to use that and then I'm going to use some packaging from the Spectrum Sherbert collection which was last week's kit for Kit Conspiracy. Uh, the oranges in it are just a perfect match for this particular layout so I'm going to use this packaging and get you know get it on my page and out of my stash. Uh, I mean, you don't have to keep pa packaging in your stash at all, but um, I really liked that it had those uh, little lines on the edge on it, so I thought it was perfect for that, and I decided to go ahead and use it up. And then I'm going to ink everything again with some Black Sit Distress ink. I like the way that that's looking. While I get these photos laid down, I wanted to remind you that Mixed Media Mayhem happens every Friday of the month. The last Friday of the month, we have inspiration posted in the Facebook group for Mixed Media Mayhem. And we highly encourage you guys to play along and share your work wherever you feel comfortable sharing. So you can go and check that out. There is a link down below for the Mixed Media Mayhem group. And there is going to be links to products that I am using on this layout, as I mentioned before. And um, there was a little ticker at the beginning that reminds you that th that the are affiliate links. Um, but sometimes I do like to mention it verbally as well. Um, I do use affiliate links. It does give me a little bit of a kickback. So I do uh, appreciate uh, whenever you choose to use those. And it, of course, it's not required or by any stretch of the imagination. But um, w if you do use them, I do appreciate that. So anyway, I am using some... Nouveau embellishment mousse and the brown color is cosmic brown and the gray color is gunmetal gray it's kind of a silver <laughs> and then I thought I would bring in some vellum so I have some vellum these are old pieces of vellum from Mrs. Grossman's one's kind of grayish one is kind of orangey and then I am going to bring in a blue one and the blue one kind of leans toward towards purple but when I put it up there I decided it was okay and so I'm going to go ahead and use it and then I also bring in one that has a text print on it that is from a different company but I'm not sure which company it is because I don't have it in front of me and it's super old but it's like a um an old newspaper looking kind of text not like a scripty text and I, I really like the way that this looks. I'm not sure what the color of the gray one is. I think it's like, I don't know, something sky. I, I, I don't know. Um, but I think the, the uh, orangey one is called Cafe Ole or something like that. But they're really old and they've been in my stash for ages. So time to get them on a page. I have several of them, so it's not like I haven't been using them or I've, you know, they've just been sitting here. I, I use them periodically. But uh, I, I still have a lot, so I'm going to get them out there and used up. And you can kind of see the blue one in the bottom left-hand corner there, sitting on top of the orange. You can see that it's a little bit towards purple, but um, it matches well enough and goes okay with his shirt. Now, these die-cut pieces that I have, the circular ones and the little chevron ones, those are both from um, Elizabeth Craft Designs. And they are from two, diff two different sets. And I will try to put the names of those sets down below also if I can find them for you. And um, I am backing those with one of the 3x4 cards from the Mente Garage collection that we are using for Kit, Kit Conspiracy this week. So I, I, I don't know what my deal is, but I don't really like to leave them open. If there are intersecting papers underneath, I think it looks funky to me. So um, I, I prefer to back them. I didn't, however, back those circles, and that doesn't bother me. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just weird that way, I guess. So I'm liking how this looks. Um, the interesting thing with the vellum is as soon as you put the glue on it, it likes to curl up. So I'm kind of having to hold it down in place while it sets up and then tack it down here and there so that it doesn't continue to curl up completely. And a lot of times I'll use my uh, acrylic block for that, but I wasn't getting a really good um, hold with the acrylic block. And so I just decided to hold it with my hand and let it sit for a second here. 
and not use as much glue as I was. The bottom left, I used a little more glue than the top right, and so I had to hold it a lot longer because it was curling a lot more. Works much better if you just put a little dab here and there rather than like a whole line on it because the whole line really makes it want to curl. Now the dies that I'm using for the leaves, um, they are really old. I don't even know who they are made by, so I can't even tell you that. But um, I, I love leaf dies and foliage dies. I think they're super universal and uh, very handy. And so they will be in my stash always. Um, doesn't matter how old they are. <laughs> pretty much any leaf dies or foliage dies would work well. I do know this one that I'm putting down now. You can see the copper one that is at the bottom of my sidekick there. I know that one is a spellbinder's die. The other ones, I have no clue. And it is an old spellbinder's also. And those are the ones that I did out of the kind of newsprinty looking, pa looking paper. And then I'm going to go ahead and work on my title here. I looked through all those black ones that are sitting there, but they, the words were so huge. I decided I didn't like them. Um, so I'm going to go with this uh, craft colored one that just says us. And I'm going to put a little period after it. And then there is a craft colored heart that is going to go in the bottom left hand corner. And that is going to do it for my title. I'm not going to go crazy or anything. Just kind of leave it really simple. I am going to back this heart though because I feel like the opening on it with all the intersecting papers underneath is not my jam. <laughs> I don't know why. Just those intersecting papers um, make it very confusing for my eye. So I want to keep it a little more simple. And um, even the pattern paper I'm using has two different colors on it. So it's not like I can't handle the color difference. I just, the there's just so much going on behind it. I thought it was too much. And I realized that you can't really see the craft colored title very well on screen. In person, you can see it just fine. Um, so I know that has something to do with the lighting on my screen. I apologize for that. Maybe you'll see it in the close-ups though. That is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions or comments, you can leave those down below. Don't forget to go over and check out what everyone else is doing for Mixed Media Mayhem. Their links are down below for you so that you can check that out. And don't forget to go and check out Memory Keep Art over on Instagram and uh, give her a little bit of love. She's got some awesome, awesome stuff, and I think you'll be really impressed and uh, maybe inspired. Um, Thank you so much for watching today. I will be back again soon with another video. Bye-bye.